Hey there, I'm going to be talking today about the Radio Master TX16S and how you can move all of your Groutner receivers and telemetry modules over to the Radio Master. As most probably know, Groutner went out of business in 2020. They closed up shop, the GroutnerUSA.com. They've recently reopened as Control Hobbies, but I don't have a lot of faith in them being supported going forward. I've also had a lot of bugs with this radio, and I've reported the bugs to them over the past three years, and they've not repaired any of the bugs. They don't seem to be interested, yet they still sell this radio. If you go on their website today, it's $569, and they don't fix the bugs especially if you got a sail plane. It's a big issue. The radio is also hard to service. I've had a problem with this radio. I tried taking it apart. Once you take the back off, you'll find that all the wires are connected to the back plate and they're soldered, so you just can't easily disconnect the back plate. You take this radio apart, no wires are connected to the back plate. You can easily service it. I ended up sending this radio back to Groutner since I couldn't fix the uh, stick myself. It was stuck. They couldn't fix it, so they sent me a brand new radio. And then the amusing part started. Their backup restore function doesn't work correctly. I had backed up all my modules to the memory card here. And when I went to restore them, we found out, again, another sailplane bug. They have problems restoring sailplanes, especially with VTails. So I had to reprogram the models from scratch because their backup restore didn't work right. I'm fed up with the company, but I have a large investment in their receivers and telemetry modules that I want to use, and they do have a good link. The, the radio link is solid. There's nothing wrong with that. So this guy, I'm not using him anymore. I'm getting him out of the picture. Got this wonderful little radio. This radio, when I bought it, was $130. Now they're selling them for about $150. Uh, it's going to cost you another $20 or so to get this radio actually working because it does not come with a battery. So you have to put your own battery in it. On average, they're somewhere around $20. And it takes a 2S battery. It uses a standard 2S charging port or balance port connector so it's easy nothing unique about that this one comes with a uh, cable so you can put charge it outside of the transmitter if you wish on your standard field charger but what's really neat about this radio when you're charging it at home it has a standard USB C charging connector on the bottom so you could take one of your cell phones your cell phone chargers and charge your radio because I've got a uh, couple cell phones that use the USB-C connector so you can just plug it in and charge the radio and like I have power strips with USB charging ports on them and so that's actually what I use to charge this radio there's a power strip here on my bench I have a cable coming out of it and I can charge the radio very, very slick. There's also a micro SD card down here. They include the card. This is where all your memory models are stored, is on that little memory card. This radio is really amazing for the price. You get Hall Effect gimbals with this radio for $150. You don't get Hall Effect on this guy. You don't even get Hall Effect on the MZ-16, which is $669 from Grautner. The only way to get Hall Effect is to drive buy their MZ-32, which is $998. I don't know where they're coming up with those prices, but their radios are not worth $998 for the kind of support they're going to not give you. Um, this radio, obviously, most of your support is going to come from uh, RC groups and the forums. There's some excellent discussions on this radio on RC groups, and there's plenty of people to help you. Now, this radio has two different versions of software in here. You have OpenTX, which is a very popular package. It's going to program your airplanes. It's going to do all your endpoints, your dual rates, all that good stuff. 
The radio also has something called multi-module that's embedded in the radio. It does have an external module port here. Right now, this is, this is just a blank plate here. But the multi-module is built into the radio. And with the multi-module, this is what makes this radio so cool. It can do dozens of different brand receivers. Some of the popular ones like Spectrum. It can do all the Spectrum receivers. It can do the Groutner receivers. It can do the high-tech Optima receivers. Uh, it does some of the Futaba receivers, the FASST. It does not do, and it doesn't do Jetty. So those are the only two that I know of that it can't do. But all of the other brands, or most of the other brand receivers, it supports, and they're adding more on a frequent basis. There's a very nice discussion on RC Groups. I'll put it in my uh, description with the link is. And they do a good job supporting any issues you find, and they're very open to adding more protocols to that module. And the module has a, a firmware update capability, and right from OpenTX, you can just download the file, you put it on the micro SD card, and you can flash update the radio. It's very easy. So you don't have to worry about having Windows or Mac, you just download the file with any kind of computer you've got and put it on the card. So on this video I'm going to walk you through getting your Grautner receivers moved over uh, to this radio. I'm going to show you how the various sensors work, how to bind a receiver, and everything works. You can use the Varios, you can use the Grautner ESCs, you can use their voltage sensors. I don't have a, a GPS, but I'm sure that works since everything else works. It's really cool. OpenTX, turn the radio on, I can show you at least what that looks like. I'm not going to get into the Welcome details Open of OpenTX because there's plenty of other videos out there to help teach you how to use that. But with OpenTX, the neat thing that I really like is this opening screen is completely your design. It's a free open template where you design what you want. You can put all these things called widgets on the screen and you are in total control of what you want here. It's really cool. And I'm going to go through the settings on some of that so you can see how you can bring your uh, Vario or Gyro or anything you want onto the screen. So I'm going to show some of the settings on here, and I'll show you how to access the Grautner menu that is embedded in these receivers. So for this uh, video, I'm going to sample the 1019 receiver. This is the Air version. They make also a multi-rotor version, but this is the Air version. And I've tested the GR... 16L, which is their 8-channel basic receiver. I've done their 12L, which is their 6-channel. I've done the 18. I've also done their GR12 that has an embedded Vario in it and gyros. That also works very well. And this radio is capable of talking to all of the sensors that I own. I've tested Varios, I've tested voltage sensors. I've tested their ESC, which can do RPM, amps, and voltage, and a few other sets of data, temperature. It all is accessible from this radio. And the nice thing is with the uh, logical switches, you can write some very powerful little commands in this radio to output all kinds of voice outputs or whatever you want to do with it. It's it's a nice radio. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is bind a receiver, and it's basically the same procedure that you would do on your Grautner radio. So we would go into the Model Select button. It's going to be in the first menu. We're going to scroll all the way down to the internal RF section of the settings, which is right here and you go to the mode button. Now mine is already set to hot and sync, but we'll go over there and I'll show you 
some of the various receivers this thing supports. You just press enter, you use the little wheel, and there's a ton of stuff in here. This thing supports a lot of different receivers. So anyway, we're going to go back to hot. Okay, leave it on sync. The receiver number is like a model match, so pick some unique number. I'm just going to pick something random. Now, I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but I've noticed that different Grapner receivers have different ways of binding them. It's based on the firmware and the, the type of receiver it is. I've had some where you can leave the power on and just hold the button in. This particular one, you have to hold the button in with the power off and then power it on. It seems to vary. The 16Ls, you can just hold the button in for a couple seconds and it'll bind. This one, you got to disconnect the power. So I'm going to use a little switch so it'll be easier to hold the button in and apply power. So we pick the bind button here. We press enter and the radio is going to start chirping. I'm going to hold the bind button in. I'm going to power up. And it's bound. That's it. It's that simple. Now, once the receiver is bound, this is a little weird thing that goes on. The first time I did this, um, I noticed a very minute amount of weird servo movements going on. Couldn't understand what it was, and I actually tried to fly a plane with those weird movements, and it was noticeable. Didn't crash the plane, but it was weird. Went out on RC groups, and Pascal, who's the guy who does the multi-protocol for this radio, uh, very quickly told me that I didn't read the manual, and he was right. I didn't read it. On the Grautner, you have to slide down here to the fail-safe mode. He wants you to, once the radio and the receiver are synced up, he wants the radio to be on for at least, I think, 15 seconds so it gets all the telemetry data into the radio. So in other words, make sure all your telemetry data is hooked up, whatever you've got on the, the port here. Once that's all in, you've left the radio on for a good 15 seconds, you come over here, you press enter, and you set this to receiver. Once you do that, it works perfectly. The little weird servo movements that you see all go away. Everything is perfect. So just do this after you bind the receiver and everything's good. After binding your receiver, they recommend fine tuning it and that's called the RF frequency fine tune. This is their printout from their website on how to do it. You can hit the pause key on your video to read this. Here's the equation with the sample. In every case when I tried adjusting this zero to negative and positive numbers I lost the signal instantly. So in no case did the fine-tuning make the signal better. And with the factory default of zero, I'm getting phenomenal range. I'm not having any problems with range. And I fly a lot of sailplanes, and I've got sailplanes programmed into this. It's working fine. I've got a regular, let's see, I have three regular airplanes plugged into this. I've got lots of flights on them. No signal issues. So you can try that if you want and see if you get different results than I do, but in my case, zero always turns out to be the best number. So once we've bound our receiver, the next step is to discover all the sensors. So at this point, you want to get your sensors plugged into your telemetry port. I'm using a Y adapter, and I have a Grautner Vario hooked up to the Y adapter. And I have one of their four cell voltage sensors hooked up where you plug the battery into the balance port and this will read up the four cells. So we go to 
the telemetry menu, which is the back page button over here. We scroll down. You might have some sensors in here because I've already used this receiver, so we're going to delete them all. Now what you want to do is discover new sensors. You press enter. I recommend waiting about 10 seconds so it can find everything that's out there. Once you've waited 10 seconds, you would press stop discovery. And now you've got all of these cool data elements that you can use logical switches on or displays or voice announcements, announcements to announce the, the, the voltage of the battery, the RSSI, um, the altimeter, the V-speed. Now, here's an interesting bug. There is a bug in here. I've spoken to Pascal uh, from the multi-protocol group about it. He's not able to fix it, but there's a very simple solution to get around this. Let's go to the top of the various telemetry data. And we have V-speed and Alt here on lines 13 and 14. Let's go down a little bit further. And once again, we have Alt and V-speed again. Now, if you notice, this V-speed is fluctuating. This one is not fluctuating. So these numbers here are the real altimeter and the real V-speed. These here are just showing up for some strange reason. He didn't want to get into the explanation. But the simple solution is hold down the scroll wheel and pick delete. And just delete any sensor you don't want. So that's an easy way to get rid of stuff that you're not even interested in seeing. You can delete all this stuff. Okay, so once you have them deleted, you're good. Then you want to come down to variometer. That's the tones for climbing and sinking. You set your source to V-speed. Do not set it to alt. There we go. We set the V-speed, so we're good now. Once you have the telemetry done, you're ready to start programming the radio, but now I want to show you the cool part on how they wrote a Lua script to access the receiver uh, telemetry. So let's hit the return key to get out of here. Now we have a system menu on the left side of the transmitter. We hit SYS, and this is a bunch of uh, scripts. So down the bottom here is something called Grapner Hot. If we select that, Telemetry lost. anybody that's familiar with Grapner will be very comfortable with that screen. That's the internals of this particular receiver. It's showing you all the settings that are available. So like for example, Routner uses something called a period function. That's how you set up your analog or digital servos. Now, on the MZ24, you have to use the plus and minus keys on the touchscreen to move this little cursor around. You can see that little greater than sign over here. Well, it's actually easier to use on the Radio Master. You can use the wheel, the scroll wheel, to move the cursor around. So let's say we want to change the period. Maybe we've got digital servos. So I've got the greater than sign on period. I would press enter. It highlights the field in red. Use the scroll wheel. Change the number to 10. Press enter. That's it. I've now got the radio or receiver set up for digital servos. Now, the one thing you've got to note, because the screen is considerably larger on the radio master, this screen is exactly how it shows on Grautner, so you have to scroll down to see additional fields because you would normally not see the field on the Grautner. So even though there's more screen space here, it won't show you the additional field. So scroll down to see the rest of the data. So in this particular case, this receiver on channel 9 you decide what you want. If you notice, it has a T slash 9 on it. You can either make this channel the ninth channel for a servo, or you can make it T for telemetry. 
It also supports a V feature, which is voltage. You can make a voltage divider, which doesn't use any um, special chips. It's just a couple resistors and a capacitor to read the voltage from a battery. So normally you're going to have this set to sensor, and then that'll be how you work the various and the, the various options from Groutner if you have a GPS or something like that. Now, let's say you want to get to the Vario. Um, if we hit the page keys on here, here's the various menus for setting up the gyro. Okay, but no Vario. What you would do is if you notice this on top, it says menu cycle sensors. Well, menu, what they're referring to is the MDL key. not So just know that menu means MDL. If you press MDL, now it says RX plus Vario. So now we can use the page buttons. To get to the Vario. So that's how you access any of the external sensors that you might be plugged into the receiver. You just use this MDL button, which they refer to as menu, to cycle through the various settings. So if I press model button again, you have the GAM, which is the general air module, and it goes back and forth. Okay. And the reason why it's showing the general air module is because it considers this part of the general air module because of the voltage. So then you can access the programmable features on the GAM. And that's right here. So this is really pretty cool, how that Lua script can access all of these different uh, sensors and internals to the receiver. They did a really cool job making this very uh, similar to what Grautner did. So let's say you want to program the gyro in the receiver. You would go to the Lua script called Grautner Hot. Telemetry lost. You're going to get your main menu. You're going to hit the page key until you get to the gyro setup menu. You're going to use this wheel to move that cursor down to do setup, just like you would do on Grautner. You would press enter, move the wheel, say yes, press enter. Now just follow like the screen says, aileron to the right. So I'm going to move the aileron stick to the right. Now I'm going to rotate the receiver to the right, and as you can see, it, it filled in a direction, so it knows what is right aileron. We're now going to push the elevator stick to the top of the transmitter. That's going to indicate down. It highlights the zero. I'm going to tilt the receiver down, so now it fills in that number with the correct direction. And last is the rudder. We're going to move the rudder stick to the right, highlights it, and now we simulate a yaw movement to the right, and it fills it in. So now the gyro is properly set up if this is the nose of the airplane, and this is the level position of the gyro. Obviously, if you mount it upside down, you've got to hold it upside down when you make your setup options here. But this gyro is now set up. It's done. It's that simple. So the Lua script makes it work just like it did in the Grautner world. Okay, so I've changed the configuration up now, and I've put into the loop a Grautner 35 amp ESC. What makes this ESC unique is it has an extra lead coming out of it. This is the telemetry data. All right. So I've put the telemetry for that on this Y cable that's going into the telemetry port on the receiver. 
and it's sharing it with the Vario. So the Vario is also still plugged in. And now I'm going to show you how to access the ESC from the Lua script. So this is now where you're going to use the model button in the upper right here. And we're going to cycle through the menus like it shows in the menu here. So if we press the model button once, it shows you Rx plus Vario. We'll press it again. And now we see Rx plus ESC. So now we can access the ESC options from the Lua script. So now just using the uh, page buttons, there you go. Now we've got the ESC options. So again, just like on Grautner, you can get to all of these sensor datas with this Lua script. You just have to remember that when you add something like this, you're going to use the model button even though it says menu here, that's going to cycle through so you can get to your other sensors. And then you can either look at the, the data, change the data, whatever you have to do for the ESC. Okay, and you have your save options here, factory reset, whatever you want. And if you want to see the Vario, we would press the model button. Now we've got the Vario. Press page. And here's your Vario menus. And you can uh, set the options up here. There's different pages for the Vario. So if we press enter, you go to page two. Page one. There's not a lot to do here, but there are things you can change. And then hit the return key to get, it, to get out. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out is when you use this uh, four cell, up to four cell voltage sensor from Grautner, when you go into the telemetry menu, it's going to show up as A2. This is a typical OpenTX nomenclature. So this is a four cell battery. It's not fully charged. So it's reporting 15.2 volts. So A2 is the line to use. Now, here's the interesting thing about OpenTX. You may say, I don't like A2. That's kind of like a name that just doesn't mean anything to me. You can go over here, press enter. Hold it down, and if you want, you can change the name. So we can call it um, Vault. Okay, now whenever you are ready to do a logical switch, you would refer to this as the vault. And there's other things in here also, like I didn't mention V-speed right now is being reported in meters per second. Very simple to change that. You would just press enter, edit, go down, here's the unit of measure, and you could change it to feet per second. Hit return to get out, and now the radio is going to report that. Same for altimeter. You would go over here to unit of measure, change it to feet. So it's really simple to change these sensors, the names and the unit of measures on them. All right. Now also, I had mentioned the main screen, which is totally user definable. Let's say we return, get all the way out of here. You would press the telemetry button on the bottom. That gets you into the widget screen. So here, like on the top bar, we can put anything we want. So if we want, we can highlight here. If you notice, it's a solid white line. So that's the one we're editing. We press Enter. And then you cycle through what you want. Here, rudder value. Then you come down to the source. And the source can be 
anything you can imagine that's available there. It can be logical switches, it can be all these variables like volt. All right, we can put voltage there, or we can put uh, the altimeter there. There's lots of things to thumb through. So here's all escape out, and now we've got the altimeter on the uh, screen. Now, if you notice, it's set up for RX battery. That's the BEC voltage that we're getting. So that's on the servo bus line. Let's say we wanted to see the 15.2 volts, which is the actual voltage of the uh, four cell lipo. Again, just hit the telemetry button, go back into the, um, the menu here, go down to the top bar, highlight the last one there, press enter, go to rudder value, change the variable. In this case, we called it volt, if you remember. We, we, we uh, renamed it. There it was. I went by it. Okay, and then return out. And as you can see now, we've got the 15.2 volts from this uh, 4S battery. So it's really simple to design this whole screen. You can put widgets here. This is a widget. You can put another widget here. This is a widget. There's other templates to pick from where you can have more widgets, just smaller fonts and text. It's very flexible. You can get rid of the um, extra channels on the side if you don't want to see where they're sitting. There's lots of different things you can do. I'm even impressed. Um, I have my gyro sensitivity on this top bar. I have my gyro sensitivity set on trim 5 up here. This is an extra trim channel that's available. So for me to increase the sensitivity of the gyro, I push the trim up. If I want to decrease the sensitivity, I pull the trim down. And then it shows me the number on the radio. So there's a lot of flexible things you can do with this that you'd never be able to do with Grautner on the uh, MZ24, for example. Okay, so to sum things up, I really like this radio. I'm happy with the fact that I can take all these Grautner receivers and sensors and use them again. I've had zero issues, no crashes, no funny stuff. Considering the cost of this radio, this is a phenomenal deal. And it's not just for Grautner. You can fly a, a bunch of different brand receivers on this radio. It's comfortable in the hands. It doesn't have a lot of negatives that I can think of. I don't care about the overall look of the radio. That's not what I'm flying is what the look is. I'm flying the radio for can it fly an airplane well. And this flies it just fine. The Hall Effect gimbals work great. The color touch screen, touch screen is working great. Uh, OpenTX does not support the touch screen yet, but they're claiming in a future release that'll happen. Uh, are there negatives on this radio? <sighs> There's a couple of minor things. If you notice, there's some print on these buttons, but because they did not color them in a different color, you can't read it. This one says RTN, page forward, page backward, and telemetry. Some people have actually gone in there with a, micro, uh, with a magnifying glass and actually paint on them. Uh, I don't have the patience to do that. And after a few minutes, you learn what these buttons are. It's no big deal. Other than that, um, there's not a lot to complain about. What's really interesting, also, we don't get a, a formal case with this radio, but you kind of do. They ship it in this foam box, and this foam box ends up being a really nice way to transport your Radio Master. It doesn't have a handle on it. Some guys have done some 3D printing. But this thing is great. I mean, you, you put the radio in here. All right, and you close it up. And 
it's not going to get damaged in there. It's solid. So this is what I've been using to transport it to keep the cost down. And as I said, some people have 3D printed something for here. They've had some clever ideas. Some people have put a strap around it with Velcro to make a handle. I'm just grabbing it in my hand and I throw it in the car. The radio is very safe in here. It's not going to get damaged. So for most people, I don't think you're going to need to buy a case. This thing will do just fine. I think this radio is worth trying out. And if you have other brands of receivers, this is a good backup radio if you've got another radio that you like. It's a good, you know, second solution. The other interesting thing that I like to point out is because it's OpenTX, you've got more vendors now making radios that use OpenTX. And I think that is going to expand where eventually you're going to have a lot of different brands using the OpenTX software. So you no longer have to learn different software when you switch radio brands. If it runs OpenTX, you can go from brand A to brand B and the software is the same. So that to me is a, a key advantage.